Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm missing my cup holder today. As you can see, I got a little bit of a different setup here. Um, but I'm covering something today that does not have cup holders, unfortunately, and that is generators. Now, uh, if you watch any of my other videos, you'll know that I have several solar systems around my house to fall back on for emergency power. Um, but I had, I've had these for a couple years now, and um, you know, sometimes it's good to have some generators, some fossil fuel generators. You may need to take them to somebody's house to, to let them borrow it, or um, if something in your system breaks, uh, you need to replace a component and you need some emergency power, it's good to have these to fall back on, like I said. Now, the biggest issue that I've seen, and I've seen it a lot, believe me, I uh, have seen a lot of very smart people make <laughs> stupid mistakes when it comes to generators. I don't know if it's necessarily stupid, but you know people are uneducated and they're not aware of the uh, maintenance requirements of generators. In the recent past, uh, I was actually responsible for a fleet of generators for a municipality uh, near where I live, and uh, there were big generators, right? Um, but same principles apply. So the most important thing to do is to break in your generators when you first get them properly and then to maintain them on a regular basis. I've seen this so many times. People buy a new generator and they leave it in the box and they wait for an emergency and then when there's an emergency, they take it, fill it up with gas and run it and you know, run it throughout the emergency and uh, that may work short term, but that generator is not gonna last very long, I can guarantee you that. So, so real quick before I get hands on, please like my video if you like it obviously. Um, subscribe to the channel uh, so you can see my other videos and you'll know when I have others coming out. And most importantly, as always, please share the video with anyone you think could benefit from it, any loved ones, family, friends um, that uh, are thinking about buying generators. Uh, please uh, pass this knowledge on to them so they protect their investment and don't waste their money. And uh, as always, I'll put links uh, down below to any generators that I recommend. Now let's get techie. The first thing that's important is to break in your generator properly. Now I would have done a video on that, but I've had these for several years and uh, I already broke them in. So the best way that I've found to break in a generator, uh, this is my method, people may do it a little differently, but I found this works very well, is to get the generator, set it up per the manual, add oil, add your fuel, and then run it for one hour with no load. Don't plug anything into it, just let it run. And then at the end of that hour, what you wanna do is change the oil. Now when you change the oil, the old oil that you take out, you'll notice there's metal shavings in it. That's perfectly fine. But that's why you're doing this. You wanna get those metal shavings out. You want it to break in, the piston to break in, and the sleeve, and um, get those uh, remnants and those metal shavings out because it'll do damage to your engine long term. So after you run it for one hour, you change the oil. You run it again for one hour with no load. Change the oil again. This time when you change the oil, you should notice that there's less shavings in the oil. That's good. So then after you change the oil the second time, you run it, but you run it with a small load this time. You run it for one hour with a small load. And then after you're done with that, you change the oil yet one more time. So you've done three oil changes now, and you should notice there's very few, if any, metal shavings left in the oil. So that's basically all there is to breaking in a generator. It is time consuming and you run through a little oil, but they don't take a lot of oil, so it's not a big cost. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, but if you want that generator to last, trust me, it's worth it in the long run. So once you've broken it in, it's very important to maintain it. So what you wanna do is every one to three months at the maximum, you wanna take it out where you normally run it, outside, right? You wanna take it outside and run it, and put a load on it. And uh, it's very simple, um, but uh, that will keep it ready to go in the event that you actually need it and it should be running and running well at that point in time. So obviously there's several systems within the generator and you'll be checking them all. Some of them just require a quick glance to make sure that they're working. Others require that you actually uh, put a little effort into it, and flip some switches, turn some dials, plug some things in. So um, what you'll be checking on it is you'll be checking the fuel system the battery, if you have an electric start generator, obviously the engine, because you're gonna run it, the control panel up front, where all of your receptacles are, 
um, and your readouts if you have a voltage readout, uh, that type of thing. Uh, and the frame, because these things shake, if you get a, kind of a bigger one, they do have dampeners on them, um, on the engine mounts and that type of thing, but they do shake like crazy, so you want to make sure nothing's loose. And then, you know, the exhaust system, make sure it's not, uh, you know, plugged up, there's nothing uh, in the way of the exhaust, so it's uh, flowing freely. And since you're going to put a load on it, which you're also going to be checking by default if you put a load on it, is the, um, the gen head, right? That's what generates your electricity. That's your stator and your rotor or your armature um, and uh, the voltage regulator to make sure that you're getting good even voltage even when you put a load on it that the voltage doesn't drop too far and you're still uh, within tolerance so you'll be checking all that stuff and really it's very simple all you have to do is start it up run it put a load on it make sure everything's running fine everything looks right so that's a summary of what we're going to be doing right and i would actually take you out while this is running and show you what i'm going to be doing but um I will uh, put some video in here of me doing that, but if I did that, you wouldn't be able to hear a word I said because the generators are This one's not so loud because it's an inverter generator. It's a smaller one, but this thing is pretty loud. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what I do, and then I'm going to simulate it in here so you can see on the actual unit, and then I'll do a little video footage of me actually doing it outside. So basically what you want to do is start up your generator, and you want to let it warm up. Give it a good five minutes to warm up. Let the engine warm up, let it get going, <clears throat> let it settle down to its, uh, to its idle speed. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug in your loads. Now you don't wanna max it out, you just wanna put a decent load on it. So what I use for loads are a variable wattage shop heater, a fan, a small heater, this is a 350 watts I believe, and a hair dryer. And what this allows me to do is, as you can see, hopefully, I have four regular 110 volt outlets. I plug them in one at a time and gradually increase the load on it. And then once you have your load in, you wanna let it run for at least 10 minutes with everything on load. Now, this will test all of your outlets and we'll test your, your gen head, make sure it's generating electricity properly and it's getting out through the outlets. So you wanna make sure that everything you plug in there is actually working. So you don't have uh, a problem with you know one of the outlets or anything like that. Cause like I said, things have a tendency to shake loose sometimes. So if everything's running, if you plug in all your outlets, something into each one of your outlets and they're all running great. Like I said, let it run for 10 minutes. Then what I do is I plug them one at a time and uh, let it cool down, run for another 10 to 15 minutes and then turn it off. There's a little bit of debate out there on whether you should run the fuel bowl dry. Um, if I'm testing every month, I don't. I just hit the off button, turn it off, and I let the gas sit in there because I know I'm gonna be coming back in three to four weeks and I'm going to uh, be running it again. So it doesn't have time to really gum up or anything like that. Um, if you're going to run it every three months, what I would recommend is not hitting the off button, but I would unplug all your loads, let it cool down, and then uh, the fuel pet cock, turn it off to shut off the flow of fuel. And what that's going to do is allow all the fuel in the system after that, including the bowl, to empty out, and it's going to um, burn through that fuel, and it's going to do do It's going to look like it's going into a death roll or something, but um, it's going to shake kind of violently. but then it will stop and that will clear out the majority of the fuel from your fuel system so it won't have a chance to gum up. Um, that's the way I do it. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion and uh, you know, there's probably some small engine mechanics out there that know more than me, but I found that that works for me and I've had no problems at all with my units. So just kind of a general uh, statement is if you're going to leave gasoline in them, use ethanol free fuel if you have that available to you in your area that's preferred or at least treat it with stable or some kind of fuel stabilizer so it'll last you uh, you know a year in storage without going bad. The last thing you want to do is have to drain fuel out of a big generator like this and replace it because that is no fun. Um, another thing that I do this is just a uh, personal maintenance kind of a thing because I'm kind of anal like that. I'm an engineer by trade and I'm a little 
um, spastic when it comes to uh, organization and stuff. So what I do is I keep, um, I have a cover for this. Um, I took the cover off for the video, but I have a cover for it. And what I do is I keep, it's a dual fuel, so I have my adapter for my uh, liquid propane, and I keep that in the bag, and I keep it right on top of the generator. I have my adapters, and um, this is another useful tip for everybody. Keep an extra spark plug or two, and the spark plug tool. I have them in here um, for both of my generators. Uh, this one I keep as it is, but I keep it covered, so I put the cover right over everything. Everything's all together there. That way you don't have to worry if something happens, you know, right where everything is. Um, and I do the same thing for my small inverter generator. I actually have the, the spark plug uh, wrench thing, and I have an extra spark plug that I bought. Um, and I keep it right in the box with everything else, so I know where everything is in case there is a problem. Just a, a nice little tip that, uh, that I use. So really quickly, I'm not going to go over the specs of my generator or anything because everybody's going to be using something different, obviously. So um, the one thing I do, like I said, is I check for anything loose. I'll go around, I'll check for anything loose. I'll check for corrosion on my battery terminals. Um, you know, I'll take the little boot, lift it up. Um, just a crack. You can generally see if there's corrosion down there. I'll make sure everything's strapped in right. Nothing's loose, like I said. Check all your motor mounts. Make sure nothing's uh, shaking loose. And then, um, you know... I'll start it up. My particular unit has the fuel pet cock down here. So I'll open it up, then I'll hit the battery button to on, hit the start button, and then this will all crank up. And I'll let it run for a good five minutes to warm up. And then as I mentioned before, this is my 240 plug. I do have a 200 foot cable so I can run this far away from the house. And I have a generator port on the outside of my house that I run to it. I don't check that as often. Um, I check that maybe once before hurricane season just to make sure that that's working. But so I check that, that particular circuit annually, but these, I put loads on these all the time to make sure that they're working properly. So like I said, I'll start it up, I'll let it run. And then what I'll do is I'll come out and I'll put my fan on it's 100 watts I will take that put it in one of the outlets then I will take my shop heater I'll put that in this other outlet I'll take my hair dryer and my heater and plug them in as well so you know you get all these things plugged in Let it run for a good 10 minutes or so. And on my unit, the voltage will pop up over here, the total runtime, and the hertz will pull up. So I'll know if I'm getting a good power out. And when I put all those in, if the voltage dips down, it'll run like 122, 123. And then when I plug everything in, the voltage will drop, but you don't want it to drop too far. If it drops too far, then you know you might have a problem. So then while it's running, I just come check my fan, make sure that it's blowing, check my heater, make sure that's working, check this heater, make sure it's working, and this. That way you know all of your outlets, all your receptacles are working. Sometimes you may trip it. If you've got a GFCI, um, that'll let you know that there's a problem. Um, so, you know, pop that back in. You have the circuit breakers for all the different circuits there. So, like I said, basically just run it for 10 minutes or so with everything on. And then you want to go and unplug everything. I do them one at a time, like always. Put my covers down, let it run for, you know, a good 10 to 15 minutes, let it cool down, and then that's it. Um, as I mentioned with the, the fuel, if you're gonna do it every month, I just turn off the power switch. Boop. Make sure that the battery is off so it's not draining the battery, and then I leave the fuel pet cock in the run position or the on position because I know I'm coming out in about a month to, to check it again. And uh, if I'm not going to check it for three months, say I'm going on vacation, going away for work or something like that, then I mentioned I will turn the fuel pet cock to off and just let it run and run and run. Uh, it'll eventually run out of fuel. It'll drain all the fuel out of the fuel line. And uh, then I come over and make sure that my battery is off and I'm good to go. 
Now this one is a little different. I do the same process on this, but this is my little inverter generator and it has an economy setting. So I'll do the same thing, start it up, let it warm up, and then I will take one item, plug it in so it's under load. I'll let it run for a little bit in regular mode, and then I'll hit the economy mode, let it run in economy mode to make sure both modes work. So that's my process. I'll show you a little uh, footage outside of me actually doing it here in a second. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of smart people had went out and bought generators with the best of intentions, uh, left them sitting in the corner of the garage with a five gallon tank of gas, ready for an emergency. Um, your one rolls around, no emergency. Your two rolls around, no emergency. Your three rolls around, uh-oh, we have an emergency. I'm gonna break out that generator. For one thing, the gas is probably stale, probably not gonna run uh, worth uh, and then they just power this thing on and let it run for 24, 48 hours without breaking it in properly. And then the next time they go to use it, it's not gonna start, it's not gonna run right, just creates problems. So please learn a lesson from them like I did. And hopefully, maybe I've taught you something today, hopefully, that can help you. And um, that's it for this video. So I'll see you next time. Bye.